ever had a nightmare updating multiple Excel or CSV files in Power BI? Well, imagine a world where you could just drop a new file into a folder and bam, your report updates automatically. Well, it kind of sounds like magic, but it's not. It is actually the From Folder Connector, and I'm gonna show you how it works. My name is Allison Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and we're gonna be diving in to Power BI today, and I'm gonna show you how you can make sure when you have new data constantly coming in, how easy it is to keep that up to date. We are gonna be using the From Folder Connector in Power BI, and this method saves tons of time when you are dealing with recurring reports, right? When you have the same exact steps, you want all of the data to do the same exact things every single time. It has to go through the same cleansing steps in Power Query every single time. It has to output to the same visuals every single time. Well, right, but you just go, you get new data every month, every week, every day, right, on some regular basis. Well, with the From Folder connector, that is gonna point to the folder, you just drop the new data in, and we have our process set up in Power BI with anything that we want to change or do. So let's go ahead and get the Power BI desktop open. I'm gonna be pulling in some fake sample sales data CSV. I'll have that linked for you below if you would like to follow along with the exact data set that I am using. However, feel free to work on this on your own. If you have a project and you're like, wow, this sounds like my daily report, my weekly report, my monthly report, my annual report, right? Let me get this connection process set up with that data as I follow along feel free to do either option as you we go. So I have the Power BI desktop open, and I also have a folder that I have saved locally on my desktop that has three close to identical files on it. Now, I'm gonna show you this process in two ways. This video is going to show how you can do this process if you have your data stored locally and some considerations around well, if you have your data stored locally to your machine and then you later on publish to the Power BI service, how does that always keep up to date with data on your computer, right? So we'll talk about that. And the next video that I'm recording on this series, I'm gonna show you, hey, well, what if you save your data to SharePoint? Slightly different process. So getting that in a separate video so you can kind of choose the path you would like to go through. Now for this one, right, we have data stored locally and I have three sales files. Each of these is tracking the exact same information. I have the same exact column structure, the same exact column names, and that really is the key here. My data is coming through the same exact way. And again, this is a perfect process when you have to do those repeat reports where every day you're pulling in new data, every week, every month, every year, right? You're getting the new data and you want that added to everything that's already existing in your report that you've already done all the steps for. So you can definitely modify, change your connections around um, if you already have a report set up or even better, if you just start your report from scratch, and set it up for success the right way, right from the beginning. So all three of my files are coming through the exact same way. I have different entries in each of them. I have different quantities of data in each of them, different row amounts. One has 10 rows, one has 15, and one has 20, right? Not a ton of data, so we can really easily and quickly see what's getting updated as we're looking at these processes. But I have the exact same column in here and those columns most importantly are also the titles are spelled capitalized all of that good stuff exactly the same because when we combine our data it is looking at those names to go find what column it cares about i'm going to go ahead and close this because anytime you're bringing data into power bi you want to make sure it is not currently open right if we have cell files csv files we want to make sure they're not open or we're going to run into some issues now, as I'm starting my Power BI report, we start this from folder the exact same way we would with any connector, whether I'm pulling in one Excel sheet or I'm pulling in a SQL server or I'm doing a web connector, we're always gonna go up to that get data button. And when I click that get data dropdown, I can see right, I have my common data sources and folder is not one of them. So we're gonna go ahead and go to more. 
can also click that icon at the top and I can see it right here in on my all section without filtering. But if you don't see it right off the bat, feel free just to search for the word folder and you will see the two folder methods. Now again, this video is gonna show just the folder with it's locally stored on your device. My next video is gonna show how you can do that if it's on a SharePoint folder. I'm gonna go ahead and, and select that first regular folder option and click connect. And all I need to do is go find where is that folder on my device. So I can go to browse, and I know I have this on the desktop to make it really easy to find. Here it is. Notice I know I have three files inside of it, but because Power BI is only looking for a folder, it's not gonna let me go any lower because I don't have any other folders in this file. So when I have the folder with my sales data selected, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And we'll hit OK again. And I can verify, right, that is the exact folder path for where my data is saved. Probably not great to save on my desktop, but for our demo purposes, that's where it's going to live. Let's go ahead, hit OK again. And we get to make a decision right now. So at the bottom of this pop-up window, we now have four buttons. Now, if you're used to bringing in data by a single item in Power BI, you're used to, of course, load. That's gonna drop your data as is into the Power BI desktop. If we click on transform, that is going to take our data up to the Power Query Editor. If we hit cancel, obviously that's gonna close it out and we start our process again. We have a new button now and that is combine. And in combine, I actually have a drop down here where I can do two different actions. I can combine and transform. So I can take the three files that I currently have. I can let Power Query, I'm like, hey, they're good to go. Go ahead, combine them. Take me up to Power Query and I'm gonna see that output and maybe I'll make some more tweaks or changes to that. Only thing Power Query is gonna do for you is take my sales data one, then it's gonna append or add on sales data two, and then it's gonna take append on sales data three, right? So it's gonna do that process for me. It's setting it up here with these three current files. Later on, whenever I have a new file and drop it in the folder, Power BI, when it does a refresh, will go out to the source and repeat the steps that we've already defined for it. And again, it will find the fourth, find the fifth, find the sixth, and just keep appending them on in the future. If I wanted to make edits to the data beyond just combining it together with an append, I would wanna do a combine and transform. That would take me to the Power Query editor so I could make those other changes. If the only thing that I need Power Query to do is combine those files, then I would do a combine and load and that would combine my current three and later on any other data together into one table and then it would drop me into the desktop to use that. Now, of course, I, I know I gotta probably clean some stuff up, make some modifications, change some stuff. So I am going to do transform because what I wanna actually do is show you how you can do this combine on your own, right? I can always let Power Query, if I know I don't need to make any changes to the data, my columns are all the same. Great, do that combine and transform. Power Query will combine it for you, drop you into Power Query to make some edits for it, and then you can go on your way and your report's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna go transform data because I want to show you what it's gonna look like if you have to do this change on your own. So now we're in the Power Query Editor. I can see I have brought in one query sales data and there are three items in here in my content column. I can also see, and this is kind of all default data that gets pulled in every single time you do this step. And that is the name of each of the items in the folder. I can see what file type, right? So maybe I have a mix of CSVs, Excel files, maybe I even have Word docs and PowerPoints and just a lot of other stuff in here, right? You can see all of the particular items and I can even, prior to combining them, filter things out. So I can then go and I can set text filters or say, hey, I only care about the CSV files. I have other data in here not related to this project don't bring that in and you can decide to get rid of that by filtering out the file type, the by the date, either access modified created, even the folder path you can modify. If let's say you have an archive folder and you're putting some of the data into an archive folder, you can say, hey, get rid of that archive path. Anything in there is not relevant for our process any longer. 
So you've got a lot of options prior to combining your data to sort and filter to make sure that it is getting added um, correctly. Only the content that you need is getting combined together. So you would do all of these steps here at this sales data query prior to doing the combine. Now in our header, in our column header in each one, we can see, of course, we have the first icon, which is our data type. The next icon gives us a drop down. Well, any time that we see a different icon here besides our regular drop down, we know that we need to take some sort of action. Here, this is where I'm easily able to combine all of the files that are listed in that column. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna hit that kind of double down arrow that is gonna combine all the files. And we're gonna see some extra stuff just get added for us as it completes this process for us on the side, right behind the scenes, Power Query does so much of the work for us. So first up, we'll get a preview of what the data actually looks like. This, my sample file is clued to my first file. So that's just saying, hey, whatever alphabetically, numerically is the first file I come across, that's the one that I'm going to sample. If we want to set it up to say specifically, hey, always use this file as our sample file to create, we can do that. I'm gonna leave it as first file and hit okay. And there we go, we can see that a parameter was created and a function, parameter and functions are besties and work together to make sure that it is taking every file that comes into that folder it's going through any cleaning steps we did, and then it is going to append each of them to the other. So we now have our output, which is sales data. And I can see I also have a new column, which is called source name. And that is identifying which file I have. Now you can delete this. If you have other indicators in your data of where uh, the original source of that data is at, or if you just don't care, it's not necessary, you can by all means remove this source name column. It is not necessary. It's just beneficial. It's nice to see where your data came from. If you don't want that, definitely get rid of that. But I have all of the original columns that I had in those folders, and now I have all of my data. I can See at the bottom, I have 45 rows in that bottom left corner. And that of course, I know I had 10 rows in the first table, 15 rows in the second table, and 20 rows in the last one. So I know that I have now all of my data, instead of being in three separate tables, has been appended automatically for me right here in two, one. Well, at this point, right, I have all of my items. This would be the point where you would wanna do all of the other steps of your process of cleaning up this data, right? If I need to also add a customer table and a date table and you know everything else that would make a proper data model, this is your time to do this, right? You have now the source for your fact table for this information coming in. You can split this off, you can add in additional data, make changes, delete things that you don't need, modify it, whatever you need to do. This is kind of your final output of that fact table and you can do any of those changes. Once you're happy with your data, you've added in everything that you need, right? Then you're good to do your close and apply. It will load that data in just as it would if you were pulling in a single file source. And I can see right here, we've got exactly all the information that we need in here. I'm gonna put this into a quick table visual because the final step is really testing, making sure that your from folder process is working correctly. So I'm gonna grab a table visual and I'm gonna make this pretty large so we can have this fill a good chunk of our screen. I'm gonna bring over my customer name and I'm gonna bring over the product that they purchased and let's say their total sales. So now I can see all of the customers, all the products they purchased and how much money is in here, which is looking good. Now what I want to do is go back to my source. So here's my sales data file. What I wanna do is kind of mimic the process of a new file being coming in, right? You download this from your company servers, right? Wherever it might be, someone sends it to you, right? You now have the new up-to-date data, right? The next month's data, the next day's data, whatever it might be. 
So you would be dropping it into your folder and hitting refresh. So for us, let's mimic that process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate one of these tables. So I'm just gonna take the third one. I'm gonna do a control C, control V. Let's rename this to keep it straight and we'll just call this one sales data four. And let's click into that and let's modify this. So what I want you to do to test this, I'm gonna delete out all of the other data, but I'm gonna change that first name to my name. So my name will then show up as a customer. So go ahead if you're following along with this data set, follow those same processes to duplicate one of those, it doesn't matter what you do, I did the third one, duplicate one of those files. So you now have four files in your source folder. Update one of those to have your name in there. We're gonna hit save, close our file out, we have their sales data for it. I can verify that that's saved by clicking on sales data. Pull that up and write, it's just my name. I can see I bought nine notebooks, I'm like notebook laptops, um, for 370, right? And spent like what, $3,000, something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And now is the moment to really make sure that you're from folder process. Currently, this is three files worth of data. I just added in a fourth file. So what I need to do is I need Power BI to go back to the source, bring in all of the current files, and follow the same exact append process and any other changes we would have done in Power Query. Now, all I need to do, hit that refresh button. Something to consider, Right, there we are. You should see your name now in that table that you put, that table visual that you put in to verify that our process is working. One thing that you will need to have in place if you have a on-prem data source, right? You saved your folder to your desktop, your C drive, somewhere on your machine. You will need to have what is called a gateway. I have a video all about setting up data gateways on your computer, what they are, why you need them, and I will have that linked below for you. If you're like, yep, I will need one of those, I've got a video and you can click below to grab that link so that way you can see the exact steps for setting up your gateway. But now, right, your report is set up for success. You have now connected to a folder. Anytime you have new data, you drop that file into the folder and you can either manually hit refresh or you set up that refresh schedule in the Power BI service once it is published out. And then it's just gonna routinely go back at whatever schedule you set to check to see if new data is in there, run anything through there, through your cleanup process and your append process in the Power Query Editor and your report stays up to date. Now, I would love to hear from you if you have used from folder before, if you've run into any challenges with that, or if you love it and it's your favorite way to keep your report up to date, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to know more about Power BI and tighten up those skills a little bit over on our on-demand platform, I've got an intermediate Power BI class that I think would be perfect for you to watch. You can use prag.work slash allison40 to get 40% off your annual membership for it. But also, if you are excited and be like, you know what, I love this process, but I don't wanna have to use a data gateway, I want to do a cloud source, well, the next video that I'm gonna record and have in this series is all about how you can do from folder but with your data stored in SharePoint. So make sure that you are subscribed to our channel so you will get all the updates and you will know when that video drops and I will see you over there.